What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of building a terrarium. So this one's really cool. As most of you guys saw, I did get a little jumping spider uh, not too long ago and this is going to be his setup. This is a little Exoterra 8 by 8 by 12 inches tall. Uh, I'm pretty pumped about this. I've always wanted to do a little micro build like this and I figured what better way to do it than for an awesome little jumping spider like the one I just got. So we're gonna go ahead and pull this cage apart. I'm actually going to be reusing uh, this back piece of styrofoam as the main background for this little enclosure. Now, as you can see, this little piece of styrofoam has got a lot of different uh, weird marks on it. That's just from the process of them shaping it. Uh, I'm actually taking a heat gun to it. As you can see, it's making it very textured by separating and shrinking the actual styrofoam itself. Um, I'm doing this on purpose to kind of just give it a little bit more texture. So now that that's done, you can see the final result there. We're gonna actually be taking some dry lock and painting this bad boy on. So dry lock is awesome. It works really well for geckos um, to kind of give you more of a three-dimensional rock feel. Uh, it does look very gray here, but when this particular color dries, it will be black. And there's also different browns and things like that as well. Um, which I will be mixing in here in a minute. But this first layer I'm putting on nice and thick to fill in all the little nooks and crannies um, before going ahead and moving forward and doing a second coat of black as well. Now that both the coats are done for the black, I'm going ahead and doing a bit of a brown color here. This is actually also dry lock. Everything I'm using is dry lock for this background, um, but I'm using a dry brushing technique to go ahead and put this on. Uh, now I am doing it a little bit thicker because I want this to be one of the main colors in it, but we are gonna go ahead and cover up all of the darker gray areas with this brown. Now this particular brown we're using is an even lighter brown. This is kind of a highlighted brown I'm gonna be using more of like a tannish color, but just to bring out um, a little bit more detail uh, using a bit more of a dry brushing technique than with the darker brown. Last but not least, going ahead and just touching up with some super highlights of white. Basically like when you get tattooed, white is the last thing you do. That's what I'm doing here. Very lightly putting on some white and just going over the whole piece. All in all, it only took me a day to build this enclosure. Uh, because this piece is so small, the dry lock dried relatively fast and I love the way it came out. This is actually the first time I've ever recycled or reused the background that came with these particular tanks, and I think it came out pretty good. Moving to the hardscape of this, so this is a little uh, oak branch that I broke off of a tree in my yard. I have a southern oak in my yard, um, and I figured, you know, this would be perfect because it's small, um, and I can kind of put it in different formats different ways in the enclosure and see which one I really like so there's a couple of aeroids on it some bigger ones I did take off 
but I'm gonna be trying to basically break off a lot of the smaller branches and get the part that's in my right hand there in the enclosure as the main portion of the branch just because it's a little thicker and I think it would look better. Now just to secure the piece of oak branch, I'm simply using Gorilla Glue, uh, you know, super glue with the gel, just little dabs here and there. This thing is not going to be supporting weight, so I don't need to add too much or use silicone or anything like that. Jumping spiders literally weigh next to nothing, so no concern there. The second branch I put on actually did have a little baby aeroid on it, so I kept that on there. After giving the cage a nice little rinse down, I'm going ahead and adding the Hydraton as the base drainage layer. Um, I've definitely realized, and Tanner from Serpa Design uh, definitely helped me realize that the enclosure seemed to do better with Hydraton over foam. So now after we got the Hydraton in, we're going to go ahead and cut the screen for the bottom for the drainage layer and remember it needs to be a little bit bigger than the bottom itself so this is the top of the cage and lining it up perfectly and then going ahead and just cutting it a little bit bigger than that so it has some overlay when you go ahead and put it in the enclosure. Because this little nano vivarium is so small, I'm just using plants um, that I pulled out of other terrariums or vivariums uh, just to put a couple in here. Now all these plants will grow in, you know, over time. I don't like to, and I get criticized for this before, I don't overplant my terrariums or vivariums or even my paludariums because I like to put small plants in and let them grow to their maximum potential basically. Uh, so I don't overplant my terrariums in any way, shape, or form, and I'm fine with that. I also don't want to plant them so much where you don't see the animal. So in this particular case, the animal that's going in here is tiny, itty bitty, and he could hide anywhere he wanted to. So I'm not going to overplant this. I'm going to plant it with just a few things here and there and let them grow in over time. Now that the enclosure is all done, it's time to try and get this awesome little jumping spider in here. I did actually end up naming him Dingo, uh, just because I was with Dingo when we found him and I was told that it is a male. Um, I'm probably pronouncing this wrong, I will put it up on the screen, 
uh, but the type of jumping spider it is is a Phytopus regis, I believe. Um, I guess they're very commonly found in the southeastern United States. I've never seen them here in Florida, but I absolutely love this little guy, and I think he is gorgeous. That's going to be it for this episode, guys. Hopefully you guys did enjoy it. Remember, like, share, comment, subscribe if you are not already. And I will see you guys in the next video. Like always, have a wonderful week, guys, and I'll see you in the next one. Huge, huge thank you to my Patreons. You guys are truly amazing. And if you guys would like to become a Patreon, check out the link below. Bye.